The message today is winning with the word part eight. Then the subtitle is the power of revelation. The power of revelation. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Class 8 verse 4. And he said, I went up by revelation. Galatians 2 and verse 2. We don't go up because we know people. When you go up by revelation, you don't come down. You have this truth? <laughs> Paul speaking in Galatians 2 verse 2. He said, I went up by revelation. If you are lifted by revelation, nothing can bring you down. Listen again. If you are lifted by someone's connection, you can fall. If you are lifted by who you know, you can fall. But if you go up by insight, you can't fall. That is, even if they take everything from you, you still bounce back. He said, I went up by anything you get by revelation is what lasts forever. If you get healing by revelation, your healing is permanent. If you get healing because they pray for you, the sickness can come back. But any miracle you get by revelation, it remains. That's how important revelation is. It's I went up by revelation. Paul speaking. If you want to enjoy God's power, you must have a knowledge of the revealed word of God. Yes, God's promises for you are real. But without insight, you won't get height. The word power in this context is divine capacity and ability and strength to make something happen and also effect changes. That's what we mean in this context, power. It means divine capacity, ability, and strength to make something happen and also effect changes. Revelation is of the Holy Spirit. He makes known to you special secrets of God that makes you valuable and never to be ignored. It's assessing deep insights that turn us to outstanding personalities. The power of revelation is the disclosure of deep insights by the Holy Spirit that turns us into men of value, solution providers, and outstanding personalities in life. Now hear this and hear me well. From today, you will not be an ordinary person. He said, the entrance of thy words give it light and give an understanding to the simple. That translation puts it this way. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. Shout Hallelujah. Now hear this and hear me well, people of God. It is revelation from God's word that shines within our heart that makes us understand what God has for us. God has so many things in the word, but many cannot enjoy the benefits of God because they don't have deep understanding of what God has done for them. Before I go further, I've been reading the Bible, for instance, and one day I just came across Luke 18, 27. He said, the things which are impossible with men are possible. Now, that scripture I've read it before. But one day light just came from the pages of the Bible. Say Revelation. And all of a sudden I saw different understanding of that scripture. God said to me, said, this scripture is not talking about someone having faith for a miracle to happen. It's talking about me stepping in when men have given up. And Mark, God spoke to them, Mark 10 to the 7, but that one and Mark 9 to the 3, they are that you have faith for God to do the impossible. Because said, with God all things are what? But in my said, if that can believe what is possible, that one said, my faith has a role to play. But this area is not talking about your faith. It's talking about God stepping in when doors are closed, like Lazarus' case. Now, because Lazarus did not need faith. He was already a dead man. Where will a dead man exercise faith? That's the situation of this one. Then I came up with fresh insight. And a young boy just looked at me and said, sir, my mother has stage four cancer. And I said, tell your mother that she's healed. I never prayed for her. I never said be healed. I just said, tell your mother on phone. On the spot, he picked the phone and called his mother. I said, mom, Pastor David said you are healed. And the woman went back for checkup. Cancer stage four destroyed. Why? At that point, it was impossible with men 
Chemotherapy was no longer working. All the chemotherapies have been chemos. You understand what I'm saying now? She had done chemo, 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 and then the woman herself is chemolized. <laughs> you know, there's a level they do chemotherapy, the whole hair goes off. You don't know? The side effects of chemo. Sometimes the women, you won't see them with hair again when they get to the chemos. But she came here with testimony with medical proof, no cancer. That's why you know, whatever is impossible in your life, men have said, God will turn it around. Yeah. That amen, let it come with testimony. Yeah. Shout to believe in amen. Yeah. You know why you need to insight? One day I was talking to a man of God long ago, and he said, you don't need a big church. All you need is just a small church with small people, just to go to heaven. That sounds very good. But I saw that everywhere Jesus went, multitude gathered. I said, sir, excuse me? He said, no, I, I think that people should just pass us. I said, what of the whole crowd in the world, so they should all go to hell? If all of us pass us a small, small church, then what would the crowd do? But Revelation showed me that wherever Jesus went, multitude did what? Everywhere. And he's the owner of the church. So anywhere he owns a church, the church should be with people. So I said, sir, I don't believe in that. He said, no, I, I think that is all right. You know all these big churches? I said, no, me, I like big one. Said Revelation. And that's why everywhere we open church, people gather. My God is a big God. I don't like small things. No, uh, or a robot said, don't make small plans here. Small plans are not for your big God. Everything about God is big. The world, big. Everything about God is what? Big. There's nothing about God that is small. Big. The whole world is world small. The creator of heaven and earth. Just imagine. He made the head, the full stone. The heavens is strong. He has the longest of all legs. If you say you're looking for long legs, look at God's legs. Heaven is thrown, the earth as a whole is where he puts his leg down. Our God is a good God. So I hear. So go for revelation. Go for what? Revelation. You can't have revelation in prosperity and suffer poverty. Everything happening in this church is by insight. Is by what? Insight. But there are areas, everyone needs revelation. Before I go to teach further, there are three areas every Christian must have what? Revelation. One, Revelation of the personality of God. Revelation of who? Every Christian know God yourself, not from another man's story. Every Christian should have a revelation of the personality of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? One day Samuel was with Eli in 1 Samuel 3, 6-7 and 21. He needed to know God. So he ran. He did not know God. He did not who? He had no personal experience of God. He had no personal knowledge of God. So when God spoke to Samuel, he did not know that God was the one speaking. He ran thinking that it was Eli who called him. Eli said, no, I'm not the one who called you. He said, lie down. This time, you will know who called you. Eli said, I know who called you, but you don't know who called you. God called Samuel, but Samuel was thinking that it was Eli who Call him. Eli said, no, no, lie down quietly and then when he comes again this time, God will tell you. So he wanted Samuel to have a personal revelation of God. The moment Samuel had the revelation of God, Samuel became a different man. He said, none of his words fell to the ground. May you have a personal revelation of God. Yeah. It's not what somebody tells you. You have a personal revelation of who God is. Not my own revelation, your own. So you know God is a good there are people who think that they are suffering because God is the one teaching them a lesson. You know why personal revelation is powerful? Two brothers, prodigal son and his elder brother. Do you know that prodigal son had the revelation of his father? The elder brother had no revelation of his father. You can be very pious and holy and don't have revelation of God. Prodigal son's elder brother. You know the Bible, you know the prodigal son story? The elder brother did not commit sin, was good. But when they were celebrating his house, whom did he go to ask about the father's house? A servant. Whom did he go to ask? So he did not know his father. He said, what are they doing in my father's house? He was asking a housemate. And when he was talking, he was talking like a, a, a real slave. He said, how come you never gave me a kid when the father had father's calf? He was asking for a beetle when the father had Rolls Royce.
You were asking for naira when the father had dollars. He was asking for crew when the father had yacht. You know what? <laughs> you know what's crew? It's the boat. They use wood and then put boat on it. When the father had yacht. He was asking for a one house when the father had a duplex. Many don't know God. They don't do what? They say, Father, anything you like, give me. They have God, anything you like. God will give you nothing. There are people who go to God, they say, Father, anything you like, even if it's a small one room, give me. God says, stupid, if it's one room, why do you come to me? Say so may I desire a personal revelation of my Father. God is your Father. Don't talk to him like a slave. When my wife and David wants to enter my room, they don't knock. They do like this. Blap! Straight. They have a revelation of their husband and father. They, they don't knock. My wife doesn't knock my door. Once they open, I know the two of them. They just do like this. Trap! As this people have come. <laughs> Even when I'm praying, it's when they hear me praying, they will not tip two and turn back. But others will not knock. Bok, bok, boy. Bok, bok, boy. I say, who is that? When they Talk to God as if you're a slave. Have a revelation of your. Do you know that people go to God and say, Father, a miserable sinner like me? <laughs> if you're a miserable, then sinner, then you are useless. You are miserable, then you are now sinner. I beg, no need now. That's your father you're talking to. You know, prodigal son went to Israel and said, Make me as one of their servants. He said, Don't say that, that you are still my son. Never pray those kind of prayers. Though. If you commit sin, ask God to forgive you, but don't go say, Father, Miserable sinner. You are miserable. Dead sinner put on top. And those are the kind of prayers we pray where we are coming from. You know the kind of background where we came from. You know those kind of background. They nailed everybody. Father, miserable sinner like us. God said, You miserable. We are untied. Have a revelation of your father. Say, My father is a good God. Yes. Say like a child of God. Yes. I don't know about you, but my father is a good God. Yes. Say one more time. Paul said that I may know him. I want to have a revelation of him. He's my father. I may know him. Philippians 3 verse 10. Friends, God is a good God. God is a good God. He's not a bad God. There's nothing bad in my father. That's why he said our father. He didn't say our... Look, God, you know what? Everywhere God wants to give me... He said our what? Do you go to beg your father school fees? You say, daddy, they say we should pay school fees. But if he's not your father, you say, Daddy, uh, Daddy, even if you call him Daddy, you would say, Daddy, they, they, they say we should pay school fees. But the son would just come and say, Daddy, look, look at the paper, school fees. They say, Okay, when do they want me to pay? That's how you should talk to your father. Don't go to God like a slave. Talk to him like your father. Hey, oh, no, no. Some of you, the way you even approach God, <laughs> you approach God. He said, Come to me boldly. He said, Come to him shabbishly. And... He said, Come to him what? Hebrews 4, 16. Come to him, what? He's your father. Let him come boldly on the throne of grace that we may obtain what mercy and find grace of help in time of need. He said, come to him like you know. You're sure. When your father you wants to pay school fees, yes, you do insult him, but you go to him and say, daddy, they say we should pay. Do you go to your father and say, daddy, I beg. Pay my school fees now. And that's how some of us pray. Father, I beg you in the name of Jesus, help me, help me. God said, why are you begging me now? I'm your father. Tell me to supply. Don't beg me like a slave. A houseboy will come and beg you, but you don't beg him. He said, Father, it's school fees. And your father will pay. So I hear. Then, number two area you have revelation is revelation of God's nature in you. Revelation of what? Everybody should have a revelation of God's nature in you. The nature of God that is in you. <laughs> Who do you look like? You look like God. True? Hmm? The day that light comes on you, your way of talking and doing things will change. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1, 1 to 4. I will read from 2 to 4. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And also, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power had given unto other pertaining to life and what? Through the knowledge of him who call us by glory and by which have been given. 
to us exceeding great pleasure promises that through this ye may what partakers of his divine nature. That we partake of his nature. Was what? So if the day you know who you are, that the nature of God in you, boy, you won't be harassed by devil. It takes a full knowledge of revelation of God's nature in you to make you talk strong. You don't see the way I talk. Hmm? I say like that, I can't be poor. You can't talk like that if you don't have anything. I can't be king. I'm unkillable, untouchable, unslappable, and unspellable. So I hear. Make yourself known. My friend, how can you carry God and a dog harass you? Get a revelation knowledge of the God's nature in you. So I hear. Listen, can a dog harass a lion? Don't be walking about and be getting afraid. Life story. The pointed gun at two believers. Shot one believer. Bah! The gun did not sound. Bah! The gun did not sound. Turn to that one, they killed the second one. Two of them don't have the same revelation. In the same car, the same time, hired killers turned the gun to a woman. Bah! The gun refused to sound. Bah! The gun refused to sound. Shot up. Bah! 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 Shot up. Turn to the man, kill him. How come they kill a man and do not kill a woman? Two of them don't have the same revelation. So have understanding of the nature of God in you. Stephen was turned to dead. Paul could not be killed. Listen. Stephen. Powerful. They stoned him to... They stoned Paul. Paul said, I have a revelation. He can't kill me. After they finished stoning Paul, Paul got up. And preached. They stoned Stephen. Stephen said, to the hand, I commit my spirit. God said, come up. We don't have a revelation. Get a personal revelation of the nature of God in you. So I hear. I'm unkillable. I'm unkillable, untouchable, unslappable, unenchanted. Anything. Permit me, unpourable. <laughs> no devil in this world can touch my life. That devil has not been born. Who? Ask my wife. We have stayed in the house where I'm robbers came. We are not talking about dream. Came face to face. Opened the door, they could not enter. Left all their arms in front. One of not this level. Open, that's they open the door. Left it open. Drop all their arms. AK-47, sledge armor. Name everything at the door. Two of us alone were sleeping. I didn't even know. She didn't know. That is, the door was open. They could not enter. We're not talking about the door was open. They opened it with master key, whatever key they used. Open the door like this. They did not enter the room. They could not enter. They left all their arms to show that they came. Left the guns. Left, well, this big sledgehammer. Left it. Left everything they came with at the door. Went back. Got up and said, who came here? Called the law enforcement agents. They carried the things. And they should know where they are now. Sentenced them straight. I understood the nature of God. That where a lion is, dog does not cross. So get a revelation. All this one small thing. Boom, he say, I want to, I want to. Chineke, chineke. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> and you get that the eyes of your understanding may be. Yeah. Number three, get a revelation of the price paid by Jesus Christ. Get a revelation of the price. Jesus paid a price for you. Every three has paid a price. He paid a price that you may not be poor. Is that true? Get a revelation. He paid a price that you and I will not be sick. He paid a price. So what did he pay the price for? How can somebody go to buy goods and pay price for you? Go to the supermarket and then you are crying. <laughs> now listen. Somebody said, I bought something for you and gave you a receipt. He said, go and collect your goods. Now you go to the supermarket. You start crying. <laughs> The whole people, including the manager, will be looking at you and say, are you okay? You shouldn't receive, collect your goods and Jesus paid a price for everything in our life. But Christians, instead of going to collect what belongs to us, he paid a price for us, but people just cry over nothing. Cry over nothing. So, have a revelation of the price paid. Say here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ephesians 3, 1 to 4, 17 to 19. You can get that. Glory to God. They sang a new song saying that worthy to take the book and open the seas thereof. For thou was slain as did us to God by the blood. Out of every kingdom, tongue, and people, and what? Nation. And has made unto our God kings and, and we shall reign on the earth. 
Sin, with a loud voice, what is the land that was slain to receive? Power, riches, glory, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Your nationality, background, status, name it, is of no excuse to deny your access to everything God has provided for you. So I hear. You pay the price for your sickness. You pay the price that you should not die young. You pay the price for every blessing. But go and find out. Go and do what? He was made poor that you and I might be. So he paid the price. So poverty is not your portion. So I hear. That's 7 Corinthians 8 verse 9. He paid the price that he died young. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. He paid the price. Oh my friend, you can't be, be foolish. He paid the price that foolishness should leave you. True? But find out. Do what? I want to tell you how to engage and enjoy the power of revelation. How do I have access to what? Revelation. Many of us don't have access to revelation. We don't even know how to. How do I engage and enjoy the power of revelation? How can I assess? Because this is available. Look at the Bible. It's available to everybody. Is there anybody who does not have Bible? Everybody, some of you have even 15 different versions in your iPad. In your tablet, you have some of you 15. NIV, some versions that we have not seen, even you have. So if you have 50-something versions in your tablet, versions of all kinds, true? You have all manner of versions, all manner of versions of the Bible there, your tablet. No tablet have all manner of versions. How? Now, now, every benefit and provision of the kingdom places a demand on you. Places what? It places a responsibility for its manifestation. Nothing is free in this kingdom. Even as free as salvation, you must make a tackle. If I want to get insight into God's word, there is a demand on my side. I have to accept what? Responsibility. I have to accept to be able to get insight into God's word. So revelation, if I want revelation from God's word, number one, I have to hunger for it. Hunger for revelation only. Hunger for what? Hunger for revelation only. Hear this. When we were in Bible school, I saw my mentor, Yedeko, will come to class to, to talk to us. He would dissect the Bible as if it's not the same Bible me I read. He would see the Bible, he said, ah, this one me I'm reading, is this the same Bible this man is reading? The way most of you are talking now when I carry Bible, it's not true. And he would be it. I said, I like this thing. Try! We were reading Bible like textbook. The same Bible it will bring the thing out. You will say, Too. So I was hungry for that kind of grace. There was this hunger in me. I want to understand the Bible. God will not give you revelation over something you don't ask for. There was this holy hunger for me to understand the Bible. To hunger. Because in Proverbs 18 verse 1, it said, Through desire, through what? A man having separated himself Seek it and intermeddle with all wisdom. It is your desperate desire and hunger for revelation that will grant you access to it. You don't buy revelation in the market. It's not sold in the market. You have to hunger for it. It's given by the Holy Spirit. It's given by the... Paul said, when it pleased God, who separated me, but from my wondrous womb, Galatians 1, 15 to 17, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and what? Blood. Neither went I up to Joseph to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again unto where? Damascus. He said, I sat down with the one who called me. Hunger, post depth of revelation, it was not from university. No, you don't get kind of revelation from school. Theology can't teach you. No professor can teach you. He went to the Holy Ghost. He went to the womb. And said, Holy Ghost, teach me. Is the author of the Bible. So there should be a hunger. That's where it starts from. Not if you are thirsty, you want to look for water. If you want revelation, where do you go? Where, the, it is your desire. For, so before we don't have just the Bible. So okay, they say we should read the Bible in our church now. Nah? Okay. Rejoice in the Lord, O righteous. Don't tire. <laughs> Onka. There is no human being can communicate to you. 
is the Holy Ghost himself. It's right here. When my mentor said, said, I can't be poor that they read the book. I admit I was hungry for it. I went for revelation knowledge. I didn't just get up and say, I can't be poor. I went for revelation what? I was thirsty for knowledge. You know why? No human being. Most of us see why we make mistakes. A man is folding up his business. He has not succeeded for five years. He wants to round up. And now you now go to ask him questions about business. Two or four years, what will happen? I'll come again. The man is folding up his business that nothing is working for five years. You now go and ask him, say, how do we succeed in business? <laughs> Did you get me at all? What will happen to your business? Just guess. The man is folding up that nothing is working after five years in business. You now, you now say, he has five years experience. You now go and ask him, say, please help me. Advise me about business. What will happen to two of you? <laughs> two of you will sink. That, that's what us are doing. It's not going for hunger for the world. To the end of the we now ask people who have no knowledge of what you are asking them about. And they're already failures in that area. A man who have F9 mathematics to come and teach you. <laughs> you, you have F10. <laughs> One time, someone was to teach me computer. I said, you want to teach me computer? The person said, yes, yes. I said, yeah, you are mature. Teach me computer, then I'll be premature. <laughs> when I'm mature, teach you, what will you become? Premature. I said, I won't learn computer from you. You are not mature. Now teach me. Two of us will be confused because <laughs> I said, then I'll be premature. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. May you seek revelation to turn your world around. But it starts with the hunger. It starts with what? You know, have you ever said like this, you want to know the Bible? How many of you have ever said like that, you want to know the Bible? That's where it starts from. Once that hunger is in you, then you're on the, on the right track. But if you don't have that hunger, forget it, it can't come. When you are hungry to say, I want to know the Bible, I don't, this Bible, I want to know it. That is where the journey starts. And you will get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Then number two, Engage in kingdom-oriented fasting and prayers. Engage in kingdom-oriented fasting and prayers. To gain deep insight on issues of life, engage in kingdom-oriented prayers with fasting. Now listen, for instance, it says, Then thy light shall break forth as the morning. Isaiah 58 verse 8. Now, every time you're fasting, let me explain something practical to you. For instance, when I wanted to come out of poverty, I was not fasting to come out of poverty. I was fasting for me to get light, revelation on prosperity. Do you understand what it is? Fasting causes you to have insight. We don't fast to come out of poverty, for instance. We fast, and when you're reading the Bible or an anointed book, light will come. I did a seven days fast to come out of poverty. Not fasting to come out of poverty, fasting to get revelation. To get what? By the time I was done, I put my hand in my pocket. I told my wife, I said, we can never be poor. It was only 15 naira we had, though, as married people. 15 naira. The day you get revelation, your language will change. I told my, 50, all home and abroad was 15 naira. It's not how much you have in the house as a married man. I talked to my wife. I said, look, sweetheart, we can never be poor. With 15 naira. That was the last day I stopped begging. I used to beg too. Oh, don't think I don't beg for I should beg. That was the last day. Begging stopped. I stopped begging that day. You think I don't beg before? You beg stylishly now. You know, begging has advanced. Begging. Advanced begging is why you beg stylishly. You, you'll be talking so the person will hear your problem. It is well, though. My children have not gone to school. The person must hear. I think say it three times. The person will say, oh, it means they've not gone to school all this while. That's the advanced begging. No? My children have not gone to school, though. The first son, I don't know how he will go to school. The boy has been in the house for some time. This is as Even pastors beg on the pulpit. They come, you know, my wife was supposed to go for a holiday. She has not gone. The ticket now is just increasing. He's begging the members. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my son was supposed to travel, but they said these days, they said, Nana with uh, dollar exchange is so high. We are believing God. He has told the members that the boy is around, though. But when I got inside, begging stopped. 
So you fast for light to come. So here. Every time you're fasting, don't just fast as hunger strike. Ask for revelation. Ask for what? Revelation. Into the word of God. Let me give you Daniel chapter 9, 20 to 23. While I was pouring out my heart, bearing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, praying my life out before my God, interceding for the holy mountain of what? God. While I was absorbed in this praying, the human like Gabriel, the one I had seen in an earlier vision, approached me flying in like a bird about the time of evening worship. He stood before me and so on. Now, it was while he was praying, God revealed to him mysteries that no man knew. He was fasting. So if you want to get mysteries, let your prayer be more of kingdom prayers. Most of my prayers, 90 something percent of my prayers are kingdom prayers. I get insight anyhow. There are things I know that nobody taught me in business. Seek you first the kingdom of God and insight shall be added unto you. So I hear. Is somebody get what God is saying? Glory to God. I swim in deep revelation from fasting and prayer. Every time you are praying kingdom prayer, God will show you things. And finally for this service, you want revelation? Be joyful. Do what? Be joyful. Without the Holy Spirit, we won't get revelation. No matter everything I teach, is the major person who gives revelation. But you can never have revelation without being joyful. Without being what? Joyful. If you are sad, be dim. Anyhow you read Bible, you will flow. Don't be depressed and go and read Bible or another book. No revelation. You won't get one. Because the Holy Ghost does not flow with sad people. Isaiah 12, verse 3. Therefore, with joy, say joy, shall you draw water. The water there means the word. With, therefore, with joy, shall you draw the word out of the world. Revelation will be flowing. With what? Flowing when you have joy. A man was trying to write a letter to his family people. He said, my dear dollar, I have very joy. I have very what? He was trying to write a letter. He doesn't know how to speak good English. He said, dear dollar, I am very joy. So you have to be very joy. <laughs> you have to what? He was trying to give introduction of the letter and he didn't know how to speak good English. He said, dear dollar. That's the difference of writing to him. He said, dear dollar, I am very joy. Go to you. Go to Little America. Tell them. <laughs> so if you want to flow, make sure you have very, very joy. If you are not joy, no flow. Make sure you have very, very joy. When I want to write to your sister, I say, my sister, I'm very, very joy. Make sure you read the Bible with a joyful heart. Don't go to a Bible with when your wife and you have quarreled. You carry a Bible. That, you will flow. When two of you have quarreled, you don't carry a Bible. <laughs> Everywhere you are reading yourself, you are saying, this woman, wicked woman. <laughs> wicked man. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Every time, you trouble me up and down. Luke chapter 2. You will not flow like that. Like, like. You will flow. You will not flow. You know, I was studying, I saw three things. The three things that make any family wonderful. There are three things. Three A's. I call it three attention, appreciation, and affection. I call it the three A's of families, binding force of families. Affection, which is love, attention, and appreciation. Any family that has this three, two of you will be very close. Love, attention. Man and woman give attention to your husband. Wife give attention to your husband. Husband give attention to your wife. Everyone like attention, including the men. Don't think it's only women who like attention. Men too, so that's like attention. But the women should be more. Man should give more attention to the women. Then, appreciation. Learn to say, thank you. It will flow. Say Revelation. It's revelation I'm talking about. I just said, what are the things that make family sweet? Appreciation. Attention. Every time you give attention to your wife, do you know that she's very happy? You don't know. Women like attention more than anything else. You can buy a woman everything in this world. If you don't give attention, she doesn't have your time. Just give attention. She can say, sweetheart. <laughs> women like attention. Let her be old. No old age in woman. No. 
Tell a woman of 80, your grandmother, says, you look sweet. She said, my son, is sound sweet? <laughs> Just tell your grandmother, who is 90, say, you look so fine today. She will look at this, but you can't blush and say, <laughs> do you know my son said I'm looking fine? <laughs> Everybody likes what? Say revelation. The three A's. And it's a revelation that made me to get them. Three A's. I call it three A's of family. It makes every family sweet. Just give your wife attention. Spiritual attention. Emotional attention. Physical attention. Financial attention. Give her what? Spiritual. Pray for her. Emotional. At emotional attention is for that too. Don't, don't sweep it on that carpet. Emotional. <laughs> attention. Physical. Physical attention is I sit down with her. That's the physical attention. Sit down with her and say, how are you? You okay? That's physical attention. Then emotional attention. You know when she needs you. <laughs> don't take anointing to sweep it. Then. <laughs> don't be so, you are not too, don't say you are too spiritual. Don't deceive yourself. <laughs> After you give her attention or she put inside detention. <laughs> you know why the woman put inside detention? <laughs> They will just walk around your room with frowning. You won't concentrate. No matter how anointed you are, when your wife frowns two times, you, your whole anointing will vanish. <laughs> but that's your frown her face two times. You carry paper and cover your face. <laughs> so give her attention or she puts you in detention. That will be family detention. Don't put your husband in detention, no. And then love her. And you too. Then every small thing learn to say... Their wives have your food. Thank you. Don't eat the food when you say, uh -huh. come and remove the place. <laughs> She's not your housemate. She is your wife for goodness sake. You didn't marry as a housewife. As a wife. She's a wife. There's no housewife. Two of you are supposed to be friends. Do you know many husbands and wives are not friends? Their husbands and wives, but they're not friends. A friend, if, you, if the person's not around, you miss the person. But the husband and wife, they don't miss each other. Friends miss each other. When the man is not around, the wife says, Fine man, where are you there? <laughs> How are you? My wife comes to my study, even when I'm fasting. She just carry an iPad. My husband and sister, I know, I know that she wants my attention. <laughs> so, <laughs> Some when I'm fasting, I stay alone. She stays alone because of preparing for program. But 11 o'clock, she will come up. And I know she wants my attention, so I leave it. I will be laughing and then I get up and walk with her to the door. Then around 2 o'clock, me, I will go downstairs, watch her when she's sleeping. I say, are you okay? And I come up again. I won't say because now I'm spiritually too charged. <laughs> <laughs> say revelation. revelation. I have peace. I have what? Peace. To prepare for crusade. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Please rise to your feet, amen. Amen. The world is full of unrest. Money has failed. Human intellect is not working. You need Jesus. In him you will find peace and rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not born to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. To watch our live services, visit our website at www.smhos.org. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.